He was a great fella. I think probably maybe the media were a bit to blame for what... They drove him mental. They wouldn't leave him alone, whatever he went or whatever he done. They just wouldn't leave him alone. Being here at Old Trafford at that particular time and George being amongst him, he was a smashing little fella. He was no different from any of the rest of us. Was he unlucky to be a good-looking Irishman and I dubbed... I think that was his biggest problem, being good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> being dubbed El Beetle after that great game against Benfica, was that the beginning of the end, perhaps? No, not really. I think the beginning of the end for George was when the team started getting a little bit older and there was a lot of pressure put on George that he was going to be the one that would have to do everything himself. But unfortunately, sometimes when you've got a great side, they stay together for a long, long period of time, maybe eight or nine, ten years, and then when you have to make a change, it's not, it's not one change, it's five or six at the same time, and it's difficult. Now, you were something of a father figure to George, and in fact, he ended up uh, living with your family for a time. That was the only way I could get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, George was... I mean, it's difficult to explain to people because people sometimes believe what the press write, and George wasn't what the press wrote about him. Mean, he was a lovely fella and a quiet lad, and I, I couldn't speak more highly of him. All the, the things that he was supposed to have done in life just, just weren't true.